Hey everybody, another week, another training report. Welcome to another one here on the Blue Abroad YouTube channel. All of a sudden we've been spoiled with, uh, with open trainings. Today was great. I just got back and uh, we had like a long three hour session there and lots of, lots of little things happening. And I'm happy to bring you the report of what today was. Um, I say this every time I go to Icon Park. And, and I probably will keep saying it every time I do go there, but there's a there's that comfort feeling of just being at home. And I think especially given it was a Saturday as well, a little bit more of a relaxed vibe, uh, people that came, you know, not at work. And so um, I always enjoy the walk up, no matter which gate you're entering from, I always enjoy uh, that walk to Icon Park because there's just that little bit of excitement that comes within. Today was a good session, good, um, Heath Buck mentioned this in his review or his report last week about how training seems to be just a little bit more business and uh, nothing is nothing is happening too much at training, which uh, tells me, yep, we're going to you know beat the Tigers round one or whatever the case may be. And maybe that's just me evolving and changing the way I look at, uh, at such sessions. But um, I really did enjoy what I saw today from a professional um, standpoint. I thought that was really, it was really good. And it all started with, with Vossi addressing everybody and uh, by, by now, most if not all of you watching will have known the news of the leadership group with Patrick Cripps being announced as the captain again and uh, Walsh and Wiedering as the, you know, the vice captains and, and that's it. And I think that is a big tick and that's one of the first bits of news for season 2022 which I have heard, which really excites me. I think we've made the right decision I like the fact that there's three of them there. You've got Cripps as the sole captain and you put that responsibility onto him. And then you've got some deputies there who really are, you know, great leaders in their own right, especially, you know, given their age. And then, you know, you've got the rest of the group who are now tasked with their own version of leadership. And if anyone has anything to say or if anyone wants to bring something up, I, I would hope that there is that environment that's there as opposed to having, you know, too many chiefs. And, you know, we've had that... We've had that little grab of Brian Cook talking about, you know, condensing things with subcommittees at the club. And it's good to see that that is now filtered through to the on-field as, as well. So great announcement. Training was, was mixed up. It was for the most part, actually, if not all of it, it was pretty much all match simulation. Um, whether it was a full ground drill or a half ground drill, as I get there, they're doing a, they sort of split up into two halves of the ground. I was filming from one side, as you'll see here. And uh, just a lot of kicking, a lot of short kicking. And I, I mentioned this in my report last week. That's something I was noticing. And that definitely shown through today as well. And I don't know if that's just because they're specifically working on it. They're comfortable. You know, they're at Icon Park. I don't know if that's going to be able to translate come round one or during the season when the real pressure and the real heat is on. But there's definitely a, a different way about when we move the ball. They weren't afraid to move side to side if need be and, and move the defense and uh, the pressure was just as, as, as good as what it was last week as well. It definitely shines through. And I think, you know, I don't want to be talking for too much to give you the punchline, but I think if I have to give you the, the standouts for me today, I think Jack Carroll sits firmly at the top. I, I just, it just seemed like everywhere the ball was, he was involved and he seemed comfortable. It was him, Cripps, Chera linking up. Uh, quite a few times, and it was just good to see. He, he even hit the scoreboard as well, and uh, he's got he's got this composure about him. I was sitting with Heath Buck for for a good chunk of this morning, and uh, we were making note of how he's got this ball drop that reminds us of the Scott Pendlebury ball drop, and you know, not to put too much pressure on him, but he just looks a lot more comfortable at the level, and to the point where I'm you know I'm, I'm talking about him, and he's standing out, and just seems to make good decisions. Beautiful kick of the footy, and seems to really have filled out a bit more and it was good that he stood out. I think when I look at him and what, is he going to play this year in the seniors? Well, I wonder what his confidence levels are like within himself. Does he feel like he belongs? And I wonder if that is even a thing for players where, you know, they're going pretty well at training and, and you know, they're very young and they're up and coming. And I wonder if he's going to be rewarded with an early opportunity. But from what I saw today, I thought he was one of the more uh, brighter lights on the day. I even think someone like a Lockie O'Brien uh, linked up well today, kicked well, and then followed up his own work pretty well. I thought last week there were a few moments where he kicked the ball out in the full a couple of times and 
and um, just seemed to be rushing things. Whereas today, it just looked better for him. Um, you know, at the end of the day, nothing I'm saying in this video is going to be used to make a case as to why we're you know winning 14 games this year. But I think when I'm when I'm at open training, I'm, you're just always looking for these little moments that you know make you smile or stand out or just give you a bit of confidence. I think Durden had a couple of them where he's just you know the way he tackles and the way he's he's ferocious at the footy. Um, I think Brody Kemp did some really nice things uh, in defence. And um, I, I, the other the other thing I took away from today's session was was this because there really is this discussion around the Liam Jones hole and, and how we're going to structure up that back line. And Mitch McGovern was definitely playing behind the ball again, um, but I don't think he's going to be this lockdown defender. I, I th and, and I know that there's this notion that Lewis Young will just automatically slot in and take that role. I don't think that's the case. From what I'm seeing over the last two sessions, I don't think that's the case. And uh, I'm going to put a video up after this one, which will be a, a full just unedited training highlights package and, and you'll be able to make your own determination on that as well. But I came away from today saying to myself, it's Oscar McDonald. I think he would be ahead in the pecking order. Uh, I don't think he'll be playing the role that we think Mitch McGowan will be playing. I think he will be more of a lockdown with Weedering on the on the you know the key forwards. And I think Mitch will probably play that Jake Lever type role. I think that suits him a bit more. Now, whether that means we're doing something else with Lockie Plowman and, and Nick Newman and the like, I'm not sure, but I just came away from training today saying, I think Oscar McDonald is, is rising um, above the pecking order in that, in that you know, backline hole. A lot, of the, a lot of what I saw from when they broke up from the match sim was more match sim, but it, it seemed like they're really working on moving the ball out of defense and chipping it around, finding the options, working for each other. If it's not there, they're not just forcing the issue there. They're switching, and you can tell that they're working on, on their decision-making with, uh, with their kicking, and that, that's something that stood out for me. There were quite a few players who were still running laps. I mentioned Cunningham last week. He was there running laps as well with, with Marchbank. Ed Kerno was there as well. He didn't take part in any of the match sim from what I remember. He was just doing something on the side. Jack Martin as well. He was another one that he took part last week, but I didn't see him in the match sim for much, if any of it at all today. He seemed to be on the sidelines. Um, you had young Jesse Motlop and Domakui running uh, away from the main group as well. Um, and Pitternet was the other one who we would expect to be, you know, in the thick of it come round one and for the rest of the season. He was another one that uh, trained away from the main group. Um, I think other little flashes of, of brilliance came from Will Setterfield. He seems to definitely be playing this outside-ish role. It's no longer an inside mid role for him, but there was a you know a five-minute patch where he seemed to just be everywhere, kicking the ball nicely, a few intercept marks as well. And you know what do you take from such little patches? I don't know, but it just looked good. And you know he did something that made me have to write it down and, and talk about it in the video. Um, so that's kind of the high level summary of what I saw today. What I'm going to do now is I've, I've taken a bunch of highlights. I've played some of them here, but I've taken a bunch of highlights and I'm going to put them together in a highlights package video. So that'll be uploaded after this one. And, um, yeah, again, as always, if, if you were at training and you saw things that I haven't mentioned here, let me know in the comments below, let us know in the comments below and, and round out, uh, the perspective of one and let's get a perspective of many. So look forward to the training highlights video and we'll go from there.